that's all. Hi everyone, welcome to the Monday night stream. Um, today I am inking the second weenie. Um, the first one was called Mad About Eat Loaf and if you haven't picked this up, you can order it now. Um, or I think it's in bookstores too, so if you go to a bookstore, you can support local. Um, but I'm working on the second one um, and it's about pancakes, <laughs> which is my favorite food. Um, I could eat pancakes all day, every day. Meatloaf's great, but come on, pancakes. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna be coloring, basically. I got everything inked. Um, I used Shayun Kim, uh, has a great uh, ink brush set that he created based on some like natural looking inks um, from different artists in history. And I used the wet ink brush from that pack um, to ink the first weenie and the second weenie. So thank you, Shion Kim. Um, and now I'm just literally coloring. And this is a young reader's graphic novel. So I actually, when I did the sketches for this, they told me to go way less detail because they're following it up. It's Penguin Random House and they're following up um, a series that they did that was um, Narwhal and Jelly, I think. Um, and it's a very simple style because for young readers, you don't have too, too much stimulation. Um, which like, I guess I get, but I always like detail. <laughs> um, so like when I did my initial sketches, like I had all these like cinematic, um, like angles and complex scenes with a lot of detail. And, um, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like you don't, this is, you don't have to do that. It's a really young, young readers readership and we don't have to go that crazy. So I was kind of sad about it, but I get it now. Like it would have been way too much. Um, so that same with the color. Like I, I really wanted to do like, you know, everyone wants to do like Steven Universe um, limited palettes that are just like really harmonious and beautiful, but like kids respond to like really vibrant, saturated color. Um, so I'm trying to keep with just like a fun color palette. I'm not thinking too, too hard about it. Um, so I think, you know, when I do my own graphic novels, I'll go a little bit more crazy, but this is just, for young readers, it's my first graphic novel um, series ever. Um, so, and the feedback I got was to simplify. So I simplified. So we're just literally coloring in lines today, <laughs> not even really doing shading. So um, I hope you brought some work to do yourself so we can hang out and be creative together. Feel free to subscribe so you can get into the chat. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna crank this out. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if I can get two pages done because right now my deadline is mid-February. So, I have scheduled, like, if I do about a page a day, I can get everything done by the 7th if I work on weekends. Um, but I kind of want to, there's a couple of things I have coming up. So um, I kind of want to get ahead of schedule. So I'm going to just try to, like, focus because I've been feeling a little bit procrastinating lately um, for most, I don't know what the reason is. Sometimes you just have those moods. Um, I think it's because I'm excited to work on so many things that like I don't know what to work on first. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna dive right in. And if you guys have any problems with the sound, just let us know in the chat and we can fix it. And uh, yeah, let's start coloring. <laughs> this is literally like a coloring book for kids. It's really fun. Like I just get to fill in like cell color, which I never get to do. Also, my not that it super matters, but my night shift is on my computer so everything's a little orange so I'm just gonna turn that off goodbye uh, my eyeballs <laughs> okay so I have another panel another page up on my side of the screen um, so I'm basically just color picking um, the colors that I already have for weenie and beans and frank and all the um characters because i wanted them to stay consistent throughout i'm not really doing any kind of well, that's a really i'm not really doing any kind of um hue changes or any kind of like atmospheric lighting we're just plugging and playing here but it's actually kind of nice it's relaxing 
I haven't been super focused lately, but usually for this kind of work, I would just like put on a show, like a Netflix show or a movie or something. And I can't usually do that. Like I'm, I'm not a multitasker <laughs> at all. So it's um, sort of nice to just be able to kick back and, oh, thanks mom. <laughs> My mom just texted me. She told me I look nice. <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. Um, but yeah, this is like when you're a kid, just grabbing a coloring book and trying to stay in the lines. I don't really need to do that here, do I? So I designed Weenie Frankenbeans myself based on the characters that Maureen Fergus wrote. Um, and she didn't have any character descriptions or anything, and they just kind of, their personalities are really strong. So it was pretty fun. It was like my first, like I've done for animation and stuff, I've done some character um, tests and just like, like a few simple designs. Um, but this was the first time I'd actually ever got to see the light of day. And um, I don't know if these characters will ever like be plushy toys or whatever. We can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that would be pretty darn cool. So um, I did a lot of research, and if you go on my Instagram, um, and I think it might be on my website as well, um, but you can see the character design sheets that I did and some of the sketches. What? Oh, thanks. <laughs> we have a camera behind me today, so I'm close to bonking myself. I brained myself earlier on, we have two boom arms holding the cameras and one's holding a light. And um, there's like weights on the end. <laughs> so they're like, I bumped my head on it today. Even though they're bright orange, I should have seen it. But when you're looking down, you know. Oh, sorry. I don't wanna go in too much because I'm gonna knock that leg. Alex to the rescue. <laughs> Oh, it is. I can back up a little bit. put the baby in the corner um if you want to switch to the screen that shows like my hand doing stuff because i just realized the the secondary window doesn't show the brush strokes it just shows like whatever you put down Do, does that make sense so just like put splotches up hi lucia <laughs> um switch to this this camera I know I couldn't because your head was in front of it. Oh. That's why I changed it. You got it. I didn't put an ear on this one, but I think that's okay. Is that too much? Cool. Sweet. Thanks, Alex. Oops. Mmm, tea. I'm running this as this picture-in-picture -picture camera. Okay. So that I still see the image coming through mostly, but gotcha. I'm all clear. Okay. Yeah, because that one, if I pause, or if I'm doing like a big pot of, spot of color, yeah. you can only see like the giant blotch when it is finished. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> it's great, because this is how I usually record my time lapses is, so if you go into, oh, I'll start here. When I started recording time lapses, um, I recorded with QuickTime and I recorded my, the actual window that I was um, like painting in, but it was bad because all of the times where I was like zooming in and out, um, it recorded that too so like by the end of it like 
it was a total barf fest because you couldn't see anything. And, um, like, it was moving around so much it didn't even matter that, like, you couldn't tell what I was drawing. So this was a hack. I downloaded a different software, which I guess I could still use QuickTime, but I downloaded a software called Hustle. And basically, probably could use QuickTime. But this allows you to select like a smaller window. Um, so I can still use the rest of my desktop. But uh, I have to go to a range and then to open a new duplicate window of what I'm working on. So then it, you don't, like that one doesn't move. So like whatever I'm doing shows up on it, but it uh, you don't throw up not moving zooming in and out okay so I got this guy over here so I got to design these little beds too which was really fun for each of the characters so weenie is obviously in a hot oh no, obviously in a hot dog bun and then beans has um, her little race car bed and Frank has a little strawberry house <laughs> which is funny because Frank is kind of a kind of a manly man you know what I mean? He's a little too cool for school. It looks like I put like a little ketchup and mustard pillow in here, but I didn't put that on the last page, so I might have to add that in again because I feel like that's a nice detail. It really like screams that it's a hot dog. Once you put the condiments in. Oops, I forgot to post to Twitter that this was happening. Oh well. I don't have many followers on Twitter, so. I just started getting into Twitter. I was really afraid of it before. Um, just because, I don't know. There's a lot of things going on. It's a lot happening. <laughs> I'm not a huge social media person in general. I mean, I have to be now, but I was really putting it off for as long as I could. <laughs> I'd just rather be making art. <laughs> Maybe one day I can hire a publicist and they can do all that for me. Although I really do enjoy engaging with people, um, especially over COVID. It's been really nice. I like talking to people, making friends. It's actually been really fun. I've been making some illustrator friends um, all around the country because people are just really nice. <laughs> It's funny because like you hear stuff on the news, like, oh, the, everyone sucks, the world's burning. And then like you actually like go talk to people and everyone's really nice. <laughs> At least where I live and like people who interact with me, um, very, very privileged to have people be really nice. Oh, the TikTok? Nah, I, that, if I thought Twitter was intimidating, I don't think I can do TikTok. It's just, okay, so like I'm talking to you like this, like this is how I actually talk. Like I feel like I have to be like, meh, 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 like if I'm on TikTok, like it's just so much energy. <laughs> and I have a lot of energy, but I use it for stuff. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out how to like write a graphic novel and do all this stuff. And it's just one more thing to learn. Like I just started like Patreon. Um, all this stuff, which I'm probably not going to continue with just because it's a lot of work. Um, so we're just trying to trying to do baby steps. And the YouTube channel is a huge one. Um, we're starting pretty slow here just to kind of feel it out. But is this on? This mic? We'll find out. <laughs> um, it's just been, it's, it's, we're getting into a lot of new stuff right now, um, especially with the YouTube channel. So, it is on? Yeah. Cool. Why is it there? I'm curious. Um, Alex just put a giant cat tail microphone next to me, so I'm learning about all of like the microphones. Do, we and wanna, do, we want, do, do they want to know like the real, the real reason? I don't know. I do. <laughs> we need like a little spinny intro for when Alex answers technical questions. Like, dun -dun -dun. That's okay. very cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'm still hearing the whole stream, like, a few seconds late. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So the microphone that's on you currently yes. is a little bit hollow where it's positioned. Oh, uh, should I change it? No, it's fine. The only way to do it would be like on a button up or put it in like the center of your diaphragm so it picks up like a lower frequency. Oh, okay. Like when it's physically connected to your body, it gets some of the low tones. You'll know we're there when we're speaking in hushed tones. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little like just freaking me out. It's a little close. Up. Just like back it up, just like right there. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, so without that, with, so it, to kind of fix that, it brought in this microphone, which is a shotgun microphone and it's kind of pointed like right at your mouth. Mm -hmm. So it picks up your voice a lot clearer and oh. it also gets a lot of the lower tones. And I can also pull some of the scratching tones from you oh, on the tablet. So wonderful it, scratching. It adds a little bit more life to the audio experience. Fun. Than just like a, one a single microphone profile. Oh. And then they're all linked up to the camera, so you don't have to worry about the delay between the two. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Run that was it for that Alex's it. little segment. That was it. I <laughs> you mean, can keep talking if you have more to say. Go for it. No, it's okay. I would actually rather position it there, but I didn't want to get in your way. Oh, that's okay. That actually is less in my way. Do you mind? Yeah, go for it. Working it out. Okay. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it's like really fluffy. It actually looks like Frank's tail. <laughs> it's called a dead cat. Oh, it's called a dead cat. Never mind. It's a lot more morbid. <laughs> Sorry, cat lovers. We didn't make up the name. Oh, you think my energy's okay for TikTok? Everybody I've seen on TikTok is like, ah, I'm a cartoon character. And I'm just like, I'm just very mellow now. <laughs> I used to be a little bit more crazy, but I am not anymore. Just because, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I always wondered that. I was like, when I was a kid, I was like, all adults are kind of like tired all the time. <laughs> and I'm not tired. I'm just focused. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But also, I think like my overt energy when I was in my youth, still in my youth, but you know what I mean? Like kiddo. Um... I was probably trying to compensate for something. <laughs> you know. Try to project. All right, I'm gonna do beans on a different layer, I believe. So I think the hardest part about doing graphic novels, and I'm glad I started with a simple one, is making things look the same. So even with this one, I put like a little darker shade of gray on Frank's tail. And then Beans has some like little orange spots of fur. Um, so in the first few pages of the first book, I did that, and then like through, through the last few pages, like I totally forgot to do it, and um, that's what editors and graphic or um, the art directors for, because they'll go through it and um, kind of help you figure out what you did wrong. And, like even like backgrounds were a little bit um, not what they were supposed to be, <laughs> um, but easy changes. So I think when I write my own graphic novel, um, I just have to be careful about because it's going to be a lot more detailed. But then maybe people will notice less. Because right now it's like a highlights, um, like what's different in this picture? Like literally it looks like if I have opened the first page. Yeah, like this is, his eyes are open. Like that's the only thing that's different. Everything else is just copy and pasted. Um, so it might be a lot more noticeable here, but still good to be um, co cohesive can I don't know the word for that it looks the same on both what? Co mm? I don't know the word it could be cohesive <laughs> cohesive yeah. congruent no Con consistent consistent we got there 
I have a stray green dot that I don't know where it's coming from. Isn't that fun? Sometimes I have like 87 to like 200 layers happening and there's the stray dot and I can't find it. That's really annoying. Boop. Goodbye, stray dot. Okay. All right, so I think that's good for beans is up here too. Boop. Um, also, happy Martin Luther King. Oh, happy Martin Luther King Day, you guys. I don't know if you say happy Martin Luther King Day. I don't know. Well, you know what? I'm going to say happy Martin Luther King Day because he was a good dude. But I worked today, so um, I kind of forgot it was a holiday. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I know a lot of people had a fun day off today, which was great. The strawberry bed. Right, you know what? I'm gonna start my timer. I have this flow timer that I used last time for 30 minutes. And I'm gonna try to get all the local color done in 30 minutes, which is kind of ambitious. <laughs> but we're gonna try. Because I have other work that I wanted, like, I've been very creative lately. Like, it's not like I haven't been working. Um, I've been doing a lot of artwork, but none of it is work I get paid for. So <laughs> I might get paid for it one day, but it's not happening right now. So, <laughs> But um, it's been nice because I haven't been able to do personal work lately um, in the past, well, like a lot of months because um, of the deadlines I had. So it's been really nice to just kind of relax and be creative and do what I want to do and draw what I want to draw. Um, just for me, just for fun, because I want to. Just for me. Self-care. <laughs> Thanks, Lucia. I dawdle around too much, so I'm trying now that I have the timer on, I'm trying to be aware of like how much I'm zooming in and out and trying to be a little bit more efficient with my brush strokes. Oh yeah, it's Betty White's birthday today. R.I.P. Betty White was so cool. That came as quite a shock, actually. I mean She's one of those celebrities that people are like, is Betty White still alive? And she really, she really had a full life, which is awesome. I'm glad that's what she was remembered for. Living? No, she, no, like, <laughs> she's still alive. <laughs> no, but it was like, you know, like you always have that moment with your friends where you're talking about celebrities and you're like, oh, because you say like, oh, was or is or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Past tense or present tense. Is it? <laughs> I gotta watch some Golden Girls. Um, I subscribed to Christine McConnell's Patreon for a bit um, over the Halloween season. And if you don't know Christine McConnell, she's awesome. And you should follow her. She's very fun. <laughs> but she's like a crafter, but she does everything kind of gothic and Halloween y and like very 18th, 1800s ish. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> Um, but she's totally rad, but she has a Netflix special, um, and now she just does YouTube and Patreon, and she's crushing it, and she lives in, like, oh, no, that was on a dimmer light here. It's not too late. Back it up. Okay. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Christine McConnell. But she does all kinds of spooky stuff year-round, so, like, even her Christmas decorations are spooky, which is really fun. <laughs> Why was I saying that? Oh yeah, because she always, on her live stream, she always watches Golden Girls. And like, talks about Golden Girls. So I'm like, I should watch that again. It's one of those things that was always on TV when you were a kid. Oh, I should make a Photoshop palette. You know what, I was thinking about that because I have Photoshop on my iPad, or I have Fresco on my iPad that I like. I don't like Photoshop for the iPad, it's garbage. Um, at least for my uses. But um, I could just use Cloud Palette 
so that I can color on the go with my, cause I, it would be a pain to open up all of the files on Photoshop. I can't just use tabs like I have here. So I um, probably should do that. <laughs> Where is that? Okay, Frank, this is my Frank layer. I got 25 minutes to finish this page. I pretend in my mind that I can get it done, and then I get pretty close sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes I'm very far away, but if I believe I can get it done, it might just happen. That's how my brain works. It's a, yeah. Just my life is one big motivational poster. <laughs> Alex is like, that's true. Except for when I'm depressed. <laughs> Maybe I am a cartoon character. Maybe I would do one on TikTok. But I'll go from like crying to like, if you feed me, I'll pretty much be happy <laughs> again. It doesn't take much. Okay, we got Franks. All our, oh, we got one Frank back here. I usually use this, um, what is it called? Mr. Natural Eraser for coloring um, because it has a little bit of texture, but it's also a very sharp edge. Um, so it's not completely like too sharp. Like I would never draw with this brush cause it's so digitally crispy. Like I don't like that look. I need a little bit of texture. Um, but I switched to this one, which is like just a solid brush pen um, just because we don't need the texture right now. We're just filling in the color. This is race car bed is teal. I might change the color of this, but for now, it's fine. That's what's nice about doing all the local color is I can go, well, all the local color on separate layers is I can go in and um, basically change anything I need to. Um, so I can just color and focus on filling. Cause the thing that takes the most time is filling in the lines and making sure everything is like in. And then the color changes, you can basically use levels or color balance or hue and saturation to change or just do a transparency lock and fill it with the paint bucket. And then you can change your color. So I never, at this stage, I never focus too much on like what colors I'm using. I just focus on coloring it and getting it done. It's like, I did like a full tire before. <laughs> Darn it. There's, I can still do it. Giraffe color. There we go. I should probably also name my layers. I usually do name them, but this, um, these never really end up being that big of a file. Um, if I'm doing a children's book illustration, there's so many, like every single element on the page gets its own layer. So I usually name them because it's re everything's really tiny and it's hard to see on the little thumbnails over here, um, in the layer panels. So, um, that's when I name them, but right now. I can pretty much see what's on each layer. So unless it starts getting really annoying later um, and I spend too much time looking for my layers, <laughs> which has happened before um, when I first started doing that. Cause I had to, I, but my first books, I did everything on like one or two layers, which is bad because if you get revisions, you're basically screwed. Um, but I didn't really know, I didn't really have a process yet. So I discovered transparency lock and all that. And um, eventually got into the flow, but um, it was really hard for me to put every single thing on a different layer because that's not what you do in traditional art. <laughs> it's like totally the opposite. So it's really annoying to do all that. And it was very frustrating in the beginning, but now I've got a lot of practice, so it's not as bad. But I remember having like a fit 
alone when I started doing that because it was so much work. <laughs> Whenever you change your workflow, it's always kind of frustrating. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch brushes and just do beans as little um, fur spots. Oops, that's where transparency lock comes in. <laughs> Time is a social construct. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> I'm known for not being very good at time. <laughs> Alex is like the time lord. Um, and I'm pretty much behind my eyelids all the time, like thinking of things to draw and I'm like things. Doctor. Yeah, he's doctor. He's the, he's the, what are you on? 14, 15, 16, 17th doctor? I just remember David Tennant was the 13th Doctor? 14th Doctor. Gosh, I don't know. Somebody chime in with that trivia. <laughs> I'm ashamed I don't remember that, but I kind of stopped after Matt Smith. So I'm also ashamed of that. But there's too much fantasy sci-fi on television now. I can't keep up. I'm coloring this right on the line ink layer. If it's black, it goes on the ink layer, basically. Is Twinkie your dog or your cat? Or is it an actual Twinkie licking the phone? Because I wouldn't judge you. <laughs> I'm really glad this is relaxing because that's kind of what I wanted these to be. Um, just kind of like chilling with your buds. <laughs> Oh, your puppy, what kind of puppy? I wish you could put photos in the chat. <laughs> so cute, send it to me on Instagram. I love puppies. Ollie was super sad before we started the stream because we went for a walk earlier and I let him go um, when we got close to the house because Chip was outside. So I figured he would run to Chip, but Alex is like, he's not gonna run to Chip because there's another dog that is Oliver's friend squeaking its toy. And so Oliver was like, he looked at me, he's like, I'm not gonna go to Chip. And then he didn't. And then I had to like carry him home. <laughs> and he's like 85 pounds, so that was fun. Um, but we were supposed to have more outside time after that. And uh, he didn't get it, because he didn't come back when I asked him to. And he's usually really good about that. And he's really embarrassed now when I'm talking about him. Okay, 16 minutes. Oh, shoot. I should have put that on a different layer, but that's okay. Um. 
<laughs> I was really struggling with him. He's very heavy. I used to be able to throw him over my shoulder, but I haven't been as fit as I as I was, and also he's a little bit heavier <laughs> than he used to be. Not by much, though. I still think he's a fit, he's a fit dog. He's not a fat golden. He's very lean. What a uh, what kind of puppy is it? different lights on this car. So I'm gonna save that for later then. It's a dachshund because then you can get I'll uh, send you a weenie copy. So in retrospect, the faster thing to do is probably to like ink one of the beds and color them and then group them in a layer. And so I could just cut and paste them in each panel because I've done like one, two, three, four, five. I've done them five times and I've colored them all individually. <laughs> so not the most efficient, but I'm learning. You know what I can do is copy the floor. Because I think that's the same. Yeah. Sure. Sort of. Why isn't that the same? Thank you, Lucia. Appreciate you. gonna move that down because there's a little bit of a tangent there. I have to fix right here too where um oh, thanks mom <laughs> for the bless you. Um Bean's race car bed is like right up against the uh border of the panel. So I'm gonna have to move that later. So that's gonna require me to go into each layer and move each color and ink. 
so that will be fun. <laughs> That's the other thing is process is totally different for graphic novels and comics. Um, there's a lot more going on, and so I notice I miss a lot more. Um, so I feel like I, I need to do a little bit more in terms of process when it comes to like checking things. Because I can basically just do a few sketches um, and then do like a color rough for the children's books, but when it comes to graphic novels, there's so much more going on and there's a lot more elements happening. So like your speech bubbles and the panels and like everything has to have a breathing, breathing room and um, the panels have to play nice with each other. So I feel like they're a lot more complex when it comes to like how things are interacting with each other. Oh my gosh, 10 minutes. What do I have left? Oh, I still gotta do all of like, oh crap. I gotta pull up a scene with Bob in it. There we go. So Bob is the owner of all these fine animals. <laughs> So as much as I would have really loved to do like a monochromatic, um, like a monochromatic comics that the palette is really cohesive, um, they're so gorgeous and like they really make comics really easy to read and um, like uh, Laura Olympus is like a two-toned monochrome. Um, there's, you know, like Steven Universe background-esque where things like are very cohesive. I'm trying to think of like other, <laughs> I should know more but I'm blanking, um, but just palettes that work really well together um, and they're not like a huge range on the spectrum of color. And I would have loved to do that for this one, but it didn't really match the voice of the comic. The voice, or the comic is really silly. So I just felt like it was okay to do really saturated, crazy colors. And I tried to help them go together as much as I could. Um, they're, they're a little bit, loud and saturated but I think that's kind of what the tone of this is about. becomes a tortoise in the hair situation. Time chef. Time chef, uh, 6.56. Minutes, not o'clock. Okay, this could be on the same layer. Let's not worry about that. 
So the reason I put everything on a different layer when I'm doing illustrations is because I will usually go over things with overlay layers and um, Alex, your dad's calling you. He'll get that in his headphones. <laughs> I guess I didn't need to color pick white. So for my, the American Girl book I just did, I made a template for the wood floors <laughs> so I didn't keep having to draw wood planks over and over again. Um, I don't think it would work for this because it's a little bit more detail than I'm willing to put into this because um, it's pretty simple so I think it, the floor would be like, why is the floor all textured and nothing else is. Um, this has a slight texture, but it's not super duper textured so I'll probably do the same thing I don't know if I have it might this might be it for the wood floors I'm gonna do this couch real quick I'm gonna do blue in the first book there's a kind of a chair Barker Lounger? Does anyone else say that? Just my family? <laughs> um, lazy boy, people call them. Um, that was his color, so I feel like they would have a matching set. Now that I'm really thinking about it, I don't know what where Barker Lounger comes from. <laughs> so that's a dadism. Oh yes, I did make an American Girl book. It's called Who's That Girl? And it is not out yet. <laughs> but it is, it was a doozy, that's for sure. It was fun to do, I'm glad I did it, but the deadline was a little bit short. It was, they wanted me to do it 88 pages in two months. And then I was like, that's not possible. And then they were like, how about three months? And I was like, how about four? <laughs> um, but I got, I think I got, like two and a half, three, three and a half ish. I can't even remember now. It was such a blur. But um, it got done. <laughs> so, like, I did Fauci, which was 44 pages in three months, and that was a rush. This was 88 pages, so I had to really simplify everything, um, which was kind of a bummer because I was really excited to work for American Girl, and um, I just didn't have the time to do what I wanted to do, but they were really happy with it regardless. So, irregardless. So that's fine, as long as the client's happy. Like I can't really, I wouldn't have gotten the job if, you know, they, they already gave me more time. And even though I was like up against other artists, it was a good learning experience. Which is always fun, learning things the hard way.
it was a, it was a doozy. Oh, thank you, Lucy. I appreciate you. That's time. Well, that's more work than I got done yesterday, so that was good. <laughs> Rushing is, um, when it comes to this stuff, it's good, because otherwise I just like zone out sometimes and it takes me way longer to do stuff. I'm gonna stretch a little bit. <laughs> you should too, if you've been sitting. I should do this more, but that's why that flow timer is awesome, because I don't get up and stretch and then my body's like I hate you <laughs> like I'm so sorry <laughs> sometimes mind takes over and body suffers I'm sorry body didn't mean to do that to you um Alex and I watched this like I forget what it's called but it was the Hayao Miyazaki behind the scenes documentary I forget which movie they were making, but Man in the Clouds, Man in the Clouds something like that. Um, I think it's on HBO Max. Um, but <laughs> like at certain points in the day, they'll get up and do like Japanese calisthenics, stretching and just do like all kinds of movement. It's super important. <laughs> so ever since then, we try to get up and stretch, even though I'm still sitting down. But I don't know what will happen if I walk away because I don't know what's on Bluetooth. Bluetooth. This feels really good because I just did a shoulder workout yesterday. <laughs> so my shoulders are really tight. Plus my upper back um, when I'm illustrating gets really tight because I'm hunched over my computer, which is why my tablet is up on a artist easel. So I don't have to crane my neck over because that was, I had to change the way I held my stylus and I had to, good job stretching Alex, proud of you. <laughs> Alex is stretching too. Um, actually, I can get up and this. I can give my butt. Today was glute day, so gotta stretch those glutes. <laughs> it's just a shot of your boobs there, just so you know. You know what, that's okay. They're covered. <laughs> Plus everyone can get a shot, I don't care. Make sure you tip. <laughs> <laughs> Did you break your back? Is that a pop? No, I'm sorry. I, these are noise canceling and I'm like five seconds behind, so I just heard the tip joke. Oh, <laughs> I was wondering why you didn't laugh earlier. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Ow. Oh. <laughs> this is not an ideal environment for stretching. It's a good thing that whole thing didn't come down. That would have been bad. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. This whole studio is stuffed to the gills with just our shit, so. You gotta do these. It's, well, I can't because I just did that and I knocked a book off. <laughs> I can do those. No lights are ahead of me today. Okay, I'm gonna set the timer for another 20 minutes. Gosh, we could play it during the stream. <laughs> I'm sure it's on YouTube, so we probably couldn't play it. I don't know, unless it's public domain. It sounded like it was from like the 80s or something, so it might be a public domain. If it was a PSA, 
But I think it comes on the radio in Japan. The calisthenics. The Japanese calisthenics is just like a cultural thing. You just do it. That's like a cultural. It just comes on to the, the broadcasting, which is really cool. Yeah, they make the Toyota factory workers and everyone could do it. Really? That's yeah. awesome because that's really important to move. Yeah. Especially if you've been in one space for too long. I'm so sorry. Japanese culture. <sighs> Me either. We can only speculate. Okay, so the only thing I really have to do left is the floors and this little chalkboard and the stool and the molding. <laughs> so I'm gonna, this is five minute break, but we just took like a couple minute break. So there we go. Yeah. Studios changed. We got, we have got some new toys for the studio. Can you hear yourself on the mic over there? Yeah, Okay. barely. Good. Barely, just just a whisper. <laughs> just a whisper. That's fun. I'm glad. I wish I could hear it. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend I can hear it. It's, uh, it's so fun. Kind of like gospel organ. Oh, cool. You know, like that. It's a real jam, yeah. That's fun. Yeah, my um, AirPods have been. Well, they should do that this morning. So I have been using my the over ear headphones but they're really hard to hear through and they don't have the transparency mode that the AirPods do. So I couldn't wear them because I couldn't hear Alex. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and go full black on that. I'm just checking back to see what Frank's paw situation was. I, I gave him these like little white fluffies <laughs> cause um, he's kind of like super serious and cool. And uh, I feel like you can't like just socks are so cute on animals. Like we have this black dog that lives down the street and the, it's just a black dog with little white socks and it's so cute. <laughs> We are engaged currently, so we uh, hoping to get this house built <laughs> so that we can get married eventually. Um, but we've been engaged for two years now, I think. Is that right? Engagement, two years? Perfect. Sure. Um, <laughs> don't forget um, to plug that I'll be building a model. On yeah. Oh, Thursday. Yeah, fun. Um, so Alex will be live streaming this Thursday. Um, we got a cricket for Christmas, and he is, um, he basically took all of our architecture plans and put them in the cricket, so he's gonna be cutting them out and then making a scale model of our house. Um, so it'll be the first kind of glance into what our house is gonna look like, so that'll be fun, because we were planning on um, using the YouTube channel and recording the entire build, because we're doing it ourselves. So. Um, any support would be awesome. <laughs> we can do it. We're, we're smart. It's mostly whether or not just the state will let us do it. Um, we're hiring all the necessary people, but we uh, are basically acting as our own GC, so. They will. They will let us do it? <laughs> they have to. So I totally forgot about um, Frank's... Well, according to the building commissioner, we can. Yes, so we will be building our own house. We're very like trepidatious right now because um, we're afraid they're gonna turn around and be like, oh, sorry, yeah, you can't. Oops. So I'm trying not to jinx it. But 
yeah, so tune in Thursday at 7 to watch Alex put together a cute little model of our house that we designed and our friend. I definitely will link it on the Instagram, I promise. But all kinds of shenanigans will ensue this summer. <laughs> Coming to Tandem Bike Studios. Couple of Jamokes build a house. But yeah, that's why like we if we were on there's that show, um Marriage or Mortgage. <laughs> and just like the people mortgage. the people who choose marriage, I'm like, it's one day and how do you not have a house like <laughs> We've been living with our um, Chip and Sue, which who, they've been very generous while we saved. Um, so we're really, really grateful that we have the privilege of having a place to stay that we don't have to pay that much rent. Um, so it is, this has been a really big plan, a lot of years coming, and uh, we're finally pulling the trigger on it. So we're really excited about it. But yeah, we, we chose mortgage over marriage. We're, we'll get married eventually, but I'm not really too worried about that right now. <laughs> Trying to get our little box, man. Little box to call our own. I think I had Weenie, his name was on here. Yeah. Cut and paste that sucker. Thanks. We don't trust ourselves to build a roof either. <laughs> we have a, our cousin is helping us with that one. He's a roofer. Oh, Sorry, Mike. Really good shot of me taking that soap. Was it really? I'm like, I just looked up and noticed I'm like in the camera. It's like I'm advertising for chamomile tea. Up close and personal shot. I'm really fidgety today, I'm sorry. <laughs> like all over the place. I'm not sorry. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Stop apologizing. I listen to a, the Guilty Feminist podcast and it's a really funny podcast about feminism. But it's the Guilty Feminist because it's like, I'm feminist but I love the movie Dirty Dancing or like something like that. And um, it's all the stuff like we're trying to be feminists but like we still have these like guilty pleasures or things that we indulge in or like things that um, are kind of like psychology that's ingrained in us that we just do. <laughs> um, like putting on makeup, like I almost didn't put on makeup today cause I was like, I didn't really want to put on makeup and um, I have acne. So it's getting a lot better though since I stopped eating gluten. But um, I almost didn't put on makeup and I was just gonna be like, I didn't put on makeup because I'm a feminist, but then I'm like, I ended up putting on makeup, so that's like the guilty part, if that makes any sense. But it's a really good podcast if you guys ever wanna find something to listen to. It's like very entertaining. Um, also, we've learned a lot from um, other feminists. So one of their episodes was about apologizing, and I apologize. I'm a serial apologizer. Like, there's a wanted, wanted poster of me out for apologizing. I might as well be Canadian, I apologize so much. But um, like I always just apologized for existing. Like people would do things to me and like, like oh sorry, like, and it was totally their fault. <laughs> um, Cause I just like don't wanna make anyone uncomfortable or anything. So my, um, not my new year's resolution, but it's just something I've been working on is apologizing less because damn it, I don't have anything to apologize for. This is me. <laughs> That's what Lizzo would want me to say. <laughs> I'm trying here. All right, I'm just gonna do these floors and then I think I'm gonna call it on this page. Oh, except we have our ketchup over here. I'm gonna make it slightly more saturated than what the... Oh, it's really saturated. Is this RGB? It is, ugh. I have to convert all of these to CMYK. I thought those blues were too vibrant. Shoot. Super dull. 
Where? Oh, that wasn't too bad. Okay. <laughs> I saw the um, the blue on the monitor and I was like, ooh, that's really bright. This is like not the same way. Okay. few things to edit on this page. I have to go back in and ink the ketchup pillow and I have to do that on the other this page as well because you should still be able to see it. So there's like little details like that that I just have to go through on the next pass and um, make sure everything's co- what was the word again? Cohesive. Cohasset. Cohasset. Cohasset hot dogs. Four. Focus. Four. Actually, can I? Can I cut and paste this? Possibly? Gonna try. Oops. My worst nightmare is my computer freezing. We lost power today, <laughs> which was fun. Luckily, everything on my computer was saved. Cause that's always a real bummer. A wicked bummer, kid. Smash that save button. I hap that happened to me when I first started illustrating a lot. I was like so furiously illustrating to try to reach deadlines that I just forgot to save. And I learned that it just has to be second nature because if your Photoshop quits unexpectedly, you're screwed. <laughs> and a lot of times my deadlines don't have built in days to just be like, well, psh, I'm not doing it today. I'm done. I've lost everything. I've lost everything. Can we copy it? Yes, we can. Hooray for copy and paste. I'm gonna merge those. Marquee, Marquee, where are you at? Well, it's quite possible my M key on this brand new keyboard could be broken. Oh, there it goes, okay, it was just glitching. Zex Marquis from Gundam Wing. Oh <laughs> Zex Marquis. I know the CMYK really changed, huh? Okay, last thing is the hand lettering on the chalkboard and on the, this little famished right here. So, I'm just gonna do it in like a dark blue.
I like to do squiggly letters when he's being dramatic or like really except like um, breathy. <laughs> like if you were saying it like, I'm famished. I feel like that's a good squiggle letter. That's what's fun about graphic novels is, um, and why I'm really excited to get into them more is you can do a lot of fun stuff with the speech bubbles and um, furthermore, the hand lettering to convey the story and kind of the emotion, um, which is kind of a fun challenge. personality in itself, which is really fun. I was explaining that to a high school class the other day, like if you look through history, like each, like there's different um, styles of lettering and they all kind of have their own personality. Like 1920s lettering is very classy and kind of posh. just because of what it's associated with. So if you needed to convey that in a story, you could use that kind of lettering. Like um, a really good example is Lack of Daisy. Um, it's a web comic and I think they're actually making a movie about it, which is awesome. It was a web comic that I, was, I read when I was like 13 and I had just started on DeviantArt. Um, Oh yeah, I think they're in the middle of making a movie right now, which is really cool, but they do, they do like, um, it's a 1920s comic, so they use a lot of the font that's like the 1920s and lettering and stuff, so it's really cool. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I really love lettering. It's not, I don't know, I, I guess I'm not much of a painter. I'm more of like a graphic artist. Um, I, I tried painting and I, I like painting a lot, um, but I'm a little too hectic of a person to have the patience for, you know, real painting. So my style for coloring is really graphic. And I think that's why I like lettering so much. It's because it's, it's very graphic, but it still has a lot of the drawing aspect. That's um, really just relaxing to me. I don't know where this layer went. <laughs> I lost it. What happened? Oh, it's in the floor folder, that's why. Get that one out of there, boop. premature stretch break. Oh man, I only have 10 minutes left. I wanted to get another page done. All right, well it's 8.17. I can still do it. <laughs> Cause that's basically done. Ooh. I gotta do this. This is easy cause this is just handwriting. So I don't have to clean it up. But do I have a brush small enough? Oh. Such tiny lettering.
It's a little jankity, but I will fix it later. Okay. Solid. Okay, here we go. Shut that off. Decent, decent. All right, just tiny details left. But I feel like I should do them now so that I don't get screwed later. But there's things I need to think about more, like Beans' pillow is, um, I don't want to just make it white because it's up against their fur that's also white. So I feel like making it white would be boring and a missed opportunity. So I'm going to come back to that and probably do a fun color. And I have to redo the lights on the, um, the race car too. So this is good because it's just like first pass of color and then I'll go back in and kind of fix everything. Um, but I like to just chug through color. Um, so then I feel like I'm accomplished because all the little details don't take a long time. It's like filling in all the little bits and bobs. So if I spend too much time on detail, it's usually my, with any book, I'll go through and do like the first big pass of local color. And then I'll go back and fill in details later because if I spend too much time on details on one page, I will be darn close to my deadline and that's bad. Gotta give myself enough time. And I could do details forever. Okay. Seven minutes, speed round. I can't stop saying Zex Marquis in my head when I use the marquee tool. <laughs> Zex Marquis! Any Gundam fans out there? Hello, anybody. <laughs> He's a Gundam fan. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Leonardo Peacecraft. Peacecraft. Dex Marquis. Dex Marquis. <laughs> Alrighty then. So I already did get one page done today. This looks more saturated than this. Why is that? Well, I'm gonna have to. Oh. Image. Oh, you know why? Because I started on RGB. And I tran. Oh, that's so much more of an umber. I need a Sienna. <laughs> Mode. CMYK. Hmm. Well, I might have to go through and color correct that one. Unfortunately, but luckily that's only like page one, so <laughs> we can fix it. Yes, we can. All right, weenie. Yeah, that's much more of the color. I remember. I remember like putting down the first first brown on the first page. I'm like, this looks really dull. That would be why. It's not the right color. I'm wondering if I color pulled it and the sketch layer was still on, so it looks it came out gray. That could have been it too. Design open just because I'm using it for this. Uh, I have the colored files going straight into the type files. Oh, I have Zoom open. Um, so I use InDesign and Photoshop in tandem with each other. Okay, it went away. We're good. Spinning wheel of death, like almost assuredly means destruction. Like, what? Yeah, we'll oh, save, save, save. <laughs> It usually means like, oh, Photoshop quit unexpectedly. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. 
just me and you. I already got my my work done for the day so now I got another one on top of that another half a one I'm feeling pretty good about this I feel like I should just live stream this whole thing so I can just stay focused for a couple hours just finish this like two weeks ahead of schedule instead of by the actual deadline The unexpected crash is the worst. I do hate it. No! I didn't close the gap somewhere. Okay. I need to take a deep breath and focus because I'm going outside the lines and that's doubling my work. I hated digital um, when I first started because I would just like draw a line go back over it with the eraser tool draw another line like just keep chiseling away at each little line instead of just using the confidence and the decisiveness that I'd built in my traditional work and so it would take me like 16 million times as long to do whatever I was doing That's the other thing too, is like we kind of get dependent on the Command Z feature. And I find myself doing that. I know a lot of people do, but find themselves doing that while you're doing your traditional work. Where it's like you're inking something and you're like, Command Z, I messed it up. Um, so it's just, that's why I still like to do things traditionally a lot of the time because it gets me to just like, nope, it's down, keep moving. <laughs> Gotta have the confidence in that one, um, one stroke you put down, because then it just gets done. Because the other thing is too, is we want everything to be perfect. And if you get really tight and you get into that mindset of having everything be perfect, you just keep going over and over and over things. And then, then it gets really tight and not super attractive, so. Um, I don't like it when my work is tight. I try to stay on the lookout for when it gets tight. So then I can just go back to my sketchbook and traditional media to try to loosen up a little bit. I should have seen these things while I was inking, but I'm so focused when I'm inking that sometimes I don't catch them. So that's why it's, when I'm coloring, I'll, I'll usually catch things. Um, and then I'll just go over it with a fine tooth comb at the end and hopefully catch more things.
Okay, so that was the 10 minute mark. I think that was ended a while ago, but <laughs> my break popped up. So I'm just gonna finish Frank and then we'll do another stretch break. What are your arms doing there, Frank? This is what happens. I need to take a break and then I don't and then I never take breaks. So I'm gonna do another break right now. I'm gonna get up and stretch. I'm trying not to <laughs> take down the entire office. Ooh. It's good to stretch too because then I start getting tired and then stretching helps me not be tired.
can really go for a googie right now. I know. I don't know what kind of googies though. Do do I don't know. <laughs> Probably just have like a granola bar. <laughs> I feel like I. What does this page look like? If I can at least get the eyes filled in, like the faces done, and maybe the hand lettering, I think that would be a good place. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Beans is yawning in this panel, the top panel, and I just looked at that while I was yawning. I'm like, same. Most of illustrating is just finding creative ways to sit on your chair so your legs don't fall asleep. <laughs> Fun. Oh my gosh, excuse me. Oh, probably because I, I was doing everything with one brush. So to switch brushes takes time. <laughs> so I learned that um, trying to switch brushes as few times as possible um, can really quicken your workflow. So I try to do that now. So if I have multiple things I need to hit with one brush, I'll just do all of those things and then switch brushes after and then go through the next pass. And instead of working on like each little facet of the project all at once, I kind of go through in waves and do everything in different, different times. Because otherwise you're like, looking for the brush, scrolling through the brushes, changing the size, making sure the opacity is all good and because it changes sometimes. And that just takes time, whether if you just do passes, you can just do it once and then you're done. More time for drawing. trick that painters use too so like if they're using they'll try to get use one like the brush with the one color on it as much as they can um, before they go to another section so they don't only have to like rinse the brush so many times kind of similar actually paint bucket Remembering paint bucket is a thing also saves time.
just be able to do the lettering and then I'll be done for the day. But that's not bad. So it's like pretty, like three pages today, pretty much close to done, which is awesome. So that puts me three days ahead of schedule. So in case anything happens, um, I have a couple days to be flexible. I'm gonna try not to use those for personal art. <laughs> Although I've, I've neglected myself doing personal art for so long and it's been really unhealthy for my creativity so now when I, the ur urge hits me to like do fun art for myself, um, I try to just give into it just because you know, it only comes about every so often, so. Um, I usually just try to figure out whatever I have to do to fit it all in. And sometimes that means working extra hours, but I think to do personal work, it's worth it. Because it keeps me fresh to do my regular work and I don't get so resentful <laughs> when I have a deadline. Keeps me excited.
<clears throat> All right, I think that might be a good place to call it because I have to pee. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. Well, three pages, almost, almost close to done. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, I feel good about that. So thank you guys for joining me and uh, viewing. And if you're watching this in the future, thank you for watching. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're here every Monday at 7 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time to just get crafty together. And uh, Thursday um, is Alex's stream where he is doing the model build of our house. So that should be really fun. So make sure you tune in for that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good night and have a good week.